Joseph, Robert, and Ray Graham were Indiana farmers. But after the local discovery of natural gas, Joe invested in a local glass and bottle manufacturing company, where he invented and patented a method to blow bottles upside down to make them more durable. From there, in 1919, they went on to start building custom truck body kits for Ford Model Ts and the heavy-duty Model TTs. Costing $350 each, there was a market for these, as the TT was initially sold as a chassis without a body. Soon, they were offering truck builder kits, which were nearly complete trucks. Just add your own drivetrain and details. By 1920, an expanded line of complete Graham Brothers trucks and buses were being manufactured using Continental, Wheatley, and Dodge engines, still with custom bodies for specific needs. In 1921, they would be contracted to build trucks for Dodge, and Graham Brothers trucks would become exclusively Dodge-powered and sold through Dodge dealerships. They would see rapid market growth, quickly becoming one of the world's largest independent commercial truck makers, at least for a minute, as they were taken over by Dodge in 1926. All three brothers stayed on, taking positions that gave them significant control of the company. But after only six months at Dodge, the brothers resigned. Dodge would continue to build commercial trucks under the Graham brothers' name until 1930, while the Graham brothers themselves would take over the Page Detroit Motor Car Company in 1927, making it Graham Page. Page Detroit started building cars in 1908, and after the first couple of years, they were simply badged as Page. The Jewett brothers would take over the company in 1911 and would have some moderate success with their sales peaking in 1923 at just below 45000 They would also introduce a budget brand in 1922 under their own name, Jewett, not to be mistaken with the similar Jowett of England. But in 1927, with declining sales, the Jewetts were anxious to sell, and the Grahams were attracted by the modern factory on a 45-acre site. So in January of 1928, the Graham brothers proudly presented their new line of Graham Page cars, with six and eight cylinders available, and prices ranging from just over $850 to just under $2,500. The smallest was the 610 on 111-inch wheelbase, powered by a 52-horsepower, 175-cubic-inch 6. Next was the 614 on 114-inch wheelbase, with a 207-cubic-inch 6 with 71 horsepower. The next two models, the 619 and 629, shared a larger 97-horsepower, 288-cubic-inch power plant on 119- and 129-inch wheelbases, while the model 835 used 120-horsepower, 322-cubic-inch straight-eight on a 135-inch wheelbase. All were flatheads with aluminum head and pistons, and all but the base six came with a granny low four-speed. Bodies were by LeBaron. Sales climbed from just over 20,000 to nearly 75,000, making them 12th in U.S. sales. And another plant was set up in Germany to provide sales in Europe. A few trucks were made before they had to stop due to a non-competition clause in their contract with Dodge. Soon the brothers would be inducted into the Roman Catholic Order of St. Gregory the Great for their contributions to charities and the church, after which they gifted the Pope a Graham town car that remains in the Vatican to this day. The cars would also see some racing success, including the 1929 Monte Carlo Rally in 74 hours and 17 minutes, and sales would be up slightly, making it their best year. In mid-1930, Page was dropped from the badging, except on commercial models, and models would be restructured, overall moving up market due to pre-depression development. Six-cylinder models were on 115-inch wheelbase, as the 66-horsepower, 207-cubic-inch standard six, or the 76-horsepower, 225-cubic-inch special six. There was also a standard or special eight, with a 100-horsepower, 299-cubic-inch engine, or the custom eight, with the 322-cubic-inch straight eight, with 120 horsepower, with the standard models downgrading to a more typical three-speed, and thanks to their continued association with glass manufacturing, non-shattering safety glass was an available option, 
and perhaps not surprisingly, sales were back down to 2,500. They once again moved into commercial trucks in 1931, leading to a short-lived lawsuit with Dodge, which was settled by the poor sales of the Depression before it could be settled in court. Like everyone else, the Grahams attempted at first to reply to the Depression with a less expensive car, introducing their new Prosperity 6 in the spring of 1931. It had a two-inch shorter wheelbase, and the smaller engine previously used by the Standard 6 now up to 70 horsepower. Starting at under $800, it was easily the cheapest car offered by Graham Page. Mid-year, the Custom 8 was dropped, making the 100 horsepower 299 the top engine, and a smaller 245 cubic inch, 85 horsepower straight 8 was added, and a new synchronized 4-speed was offered. Advertising was done over the Sunday evening Graham Radio Hour with Edgar Guest and the Detroit Symphony. They leased out unused assets and used the money to develop the new Blue Streak 8 as the global economy continued to decline, with the trend being more towards dumbing down the cars to save money. On a 123-inch wheelbase, the Blue Streak 8 was available in standard and deluxe editions, priced between $1,000 and $1,200, with several improvements in suspension geometry, a stiffer frame, and upgraded brakes. The bodies were by Murray and Dietrich and had deeply curved fenders and a fully hidden radiator, which nearly everyone copied the following year. It used a 90 horsepower version of the 245 straight 8, and it would set a number of speed records, and it would also be entered in both the 32 and 34 Indy 500s. The car got enough of the public's attention that Tootsie Toy would sell more than 4 million toy replicas of the car while Graham's complete line of actual cars would sell fewer than 13,000 for 1932. In fact, Graham's financial struggles would soon lead to Ray Graham's mental breakdown and eventual suicide at the age of 45. For 1933, there was a new long wheelbase 6 at 118 inches, and all engines got new four-point rubber mounts and improved intakes for five-horsepower gains, as well as blue streak styling. It was advertised as the most imitated car on the road, but sales were still down to around 11,000. For 1934, their answer was the supercharger. The Graham Blower was the first on a moderately priced American production car and could be had for under $1,300. The 265 cubic inch 8 produced 135 horsepower and 210 pound-feet of torque, moving the car to 90 miles an hour. Irwin Cannonball Baker would set a cross-country record in one that would stand until the 1971 cross-country race that would be named after him. In 1935, the Standard 6 was significantly downgraded in both features and style. With prices under $800, production rose to back over $18,000. The 1936 models were on a simplified frame with bodies shared with Rio and Graham would move the supercharger to a 218 cubic inch 6 with 112 horsepower and dropped the 8. The supercharged 6 was more than $200 cheaper than the outgoing base 8, but was a leader in both performance and economy, with the supercharged sedan being tested with a 0 to 60 of 14 and a half seconds and getting the first of many economy run wins at nearly 27 miles per gallon. Although their German plant was long gone by this point, they still retained a European presence, providing full-running chassis to Lamas in England and engines to Voisin in France. They also attempted to expand into other markets, adapting the engine to marine use and developing the Graham Bradley tractor to be sold through the Sears catalog, but neither venture proved very successful. In 1937, they sold their body tooling to Nissan, who put it into production under their own name in Japan, which gave them the money to create an all-new car with Spirit of Motion design. It was offered in standard, special, supercharger, and custom supercharger trim, and priced from $1,100 to $1,400, with an updated carburetor and improved cooling, and a modern interior that included the speedometer and tack combined into a single gauge. Conservative buyers thought that the car was too radical, and it would become known as the Shark Nose Graham. Although the cars seemed popular with European custom coach builders, particularly in France, 
they were still unable to maintain a profitable sales margin. And bleeding money led to aggressive marketing, claiming to be the fastest and the most economical, and that the cars only needed oil changes every six months, which led to a slap on the wrist by the Federal Trade Commission, calling the claims unproven. Meanwhile, Huckmobile had started building cars using old cord body tooling, converted for use as a rear-wheel drive, and sold as the Hupp Skylark. And in 1940, Graham would be using the same body tooling for their own Hollywood model. Both cars would be assembled by Graham, using each company's own drivetrains. Wheelbase was 115 inches, 10 inches shorter than the front-wheel drive cord. But the old cord body dies were unsuited for mass production, and the cars were slow to make it to market. Hupp went into receivership in 1940, after fewer than 320 Skylarks were made, mostly sold as 1941 models. By this point, Robert Graham would retire, and Joe was putting his own money into the company to keep it afloat. The shark nose was dropped in 1941, while Hollywood horsepower was upped to 125 on the supercharged model, and its price was reduced by $200. Still, less than 3,000 cars would be built that year. Soon, the plant would be closed so the company could move to production for the war effort. This included engines for aircraft and PT boats, armaments such as torpedoes, and the amphibious LVT alligator, or sea demon. During the war, the automotive part of the company was taken over by Henry Fraser, and a new car was put into development, a car that would make it into production as the post-war wonder known as Kaiser Fraser. By this point, Graham Page itself was essentially just an investment firm, and by the early 1950s would sell off its shares in Kaiser Fraser and Fraser Farm Equipment, and moving its focus to managing professional sports, soon to become the Madison Square Garden Corporation. But with the current Ram trucks being able to trace their heritage to the original Graham Brothers trucks, and their impact on other countries' auto industries, as well as on other unrelated industries, it seems that the Graham brothers were more influential than they were successful, at least in the auto industry. If you want to have say in what brand I do next, check out the latest poll on my community page. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment below and like and subscribe.